professional fucking podcasting. <laughs> Here we are on our shit. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rich Dickman Show, the podcast for being slightly better than mediocre may or may not make you a rich dick man. I am Rem, I am guest hosting once again for the for the uh, for the fabulous Mr. Dickman. Uh, it is episode 13 on the 13th of July, which is Friday the 13th, so many 13th, such a good time. Joining me tonight, as always, is is my rich white friend, Huel Hauser. Huel, what's up, pal? MS-13, that's me. That's right, oh, that's Friday right. Friday the 13th, yeah. Your new we're gang, bringing it around full circle. All, all your clients. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, buddy. How are you doing? I gotta know. You know, we started late tonight. Poor cold had to go to bed. Um, why? How? How did you end up at a country club drinking margaritas? You know, I I have traveled a long journey <laughs> from the child <laughs> Mexican carnies to where I'm at today. Which, you know, you know, it doesn't, however you look at it, I don't think that you could look at me and say, you know what? That guy's not a success. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're like, totally he's not, a success, dude. He's, uh, he's moved a lot, a long way from point A to point B. Yeah. And unfortunately, what that means is that sometimes, you know, sometimes I hire a cleaning lady to clean my house. Sometimes <laughs> I, I, you know, sometimes I have like a big TV and sometimes I find myself sitting poolside at the local country club telling a white girl to bring me a drink. What kind of weird fucked up world is that? Do you know what I mean? Like, like I'm sitting on the chair, you know, the fucking beach chair. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting on a chair and I'm like in my shorts, in my like swim trunks. I'm just blasting my gut. That's by the way, I'm, I'm so it's like full on topless Mexican full on with heels. multiple, <laughs> multiple old English tattoos. That's on right. You know, like I have, I have multiple women's names tattooed on my body. So, you know, I may, I may look like respectable gentlemen from the neck up, but I look straight MS 13 from the neck down. Um, <laughs> So I'm sitting there with my big hairy gut blasting my old English tattoos and like, like a white girl is coming up to me and saying, sir, can I get you a drink? Sir, sir, to me. And I'm like, yes, white girl, go get me a margarita. And then she goes and she does it. God, if and it I'm was... like, thank you. Thank you, lady who should be lying on this chair. And I should be bringing you a drink and probably getting fired because I'm stoned on the job. If it was like a white a, male, every progressive would be having an orgasm. Weird. It's a weird, yeah. it's weird. So it's just weird. Were you there with your family? Yep. My family was there. Are like you my kids? My little half breed kids are just <laughs> playing in the pool with all these like Aryan children. It's fucked up, Rem. <laughs> like it's fucked up. No way. No, there's no way to look at it where it's not weird. Are you a member of this club or were you a guest? Uh, I am a, a guest and potential member. Oh, so they're, they're trying to like to woo you in. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. All right. Can I ask you if you even know how much does it cost to be a member of this country club? I don't even know. No. I don't know. No. It must be expensive. I don't know. Who invited you? Was it your boss or somebody else? Yeah. Boss. My boss. Yeah. Is your boss a white man? Uh, yes, he is. All right. So is he like trying to like ingrain you into the culture? Um, no, it's more like to meet clients. I, I think maybe the country club is kind of an older crowd. Yeah. And they're always like kind of pushing for like some new blood. Oh, so they're, they're like, so you have like a diversity push at the country club too. More of an age push. I would say more of an age push. I got you. Okay. Is, is there golf at this country club? Yeah. Golf course, do you uh, play golf? tennis courts. I don't play golf. I don't know. What, what business do I have at the golf course? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm just asking questions here because this is this is fascinating. Uh, I'm so Mexican carny. I'm not even qualified to do landscaping. <laughs> like I'm not even like that much of a shit together Mexican that I know how to like run a fucking riding lawnmower. Who mows your lawn then? I mow my lawn, but oh, I do. like I'm not qualified to like take care of a fucking putting green. Okay. <laughs> 
Gotcha. Like I, I mow my lawn like once every like two or three weeks when like the neighbors start giving me like the stink eye because my lawn looks like hell and it's all overgrown. Yeah. And then I'm like, I guess I got to mow this fucking thing before they call the cops. Have you ever considered hiring a Mexican to mow your lawn? I would. I would. Yes, I yeah. have considered yeah. that. See, yeah. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> I hope I hope when they start putting people up against the wall, Joma man is I'm going to be the first one. Whoa, I just thought of something. When when Joma goes on his quest to eat rich people, you're a, you're almost a country club member, Huel. He has to he's going to have to divorce you. I'm going to just be sad. My favorite Joma man's my favorite person. Oh man, he's like your biggest fan too. Man, I'm sorry. Joma don't just pretend you didn't hear any of that. If if anything though, I feel at least there's some benefit there. Because I feel like I'm a like I'm like I'm a contaminant that they can't get rid of. Yeah. Like like I'm a like I'm a stink that they'll never wash out. I feel like there's a stink on that lounge chair that they'll never be able to wash out. <laughs> nobody be sitting like, on it. Nobody will ever want to sit there again. And they'll be like, uh, "Hey, yeah. Mister 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 Huel, we saved this chair for you." Yeah, you're <laughs> only allowed to sit in this chair because you're gross. <laughs> also, can you please put a shirt on and? Cover up your gang tattoos? Like, can you do that for us? How many other members had tattoos exposed? Zero. Zero people. <laughs> zero. There was the, every single old English letter at the country club was uh, inked onto my body. Is there any way when I do the YouTube video and I put this clip up there, can you get me a picture of one of your tattoos I can put on the on, on the YouTube? Oh, I'm not a young man anymore, man. I don't know if I could just be blasting my fat gut on the internet i'm not looking for a full body shot dude I just like give me give me a letter or something i'll i'll try that i'll figure it out okay <laughs> it's an it's an ex-wife an ex-wife tattoo across what does your, your current lady think of your ex-wife's tattoo on your well you know so it the the name that is tattooed on my belly is like my second ex-wife my second wife which was a long time ago. So there's been a long, a long string of ladies since then that have all had to kind of come, come to come to their peace with my body. So they come to Jesus with your tattoos. Get there, they're like, you know, it's there. Like old Vincente has his benefits and he has his downsides. <laughs> um, do you know what I feel bad for the for that particular wife when when I got that tattoo? She also got a tramp stamp that says Vincente. Oh, God. And I'm like, man, you oh. know, out of the two of us, like, I probably got the better deal of that. Because a guy um, with, you know, some lady names on his body, like, in, in a certain light, that looks kind of cool. But just, like, can you imagine yeah. bending over my second ex-wife and having to look at my dumb name while you're trying to, you know, while you're trying to get to the holy land there <laughs> that's your mexican male privilege right there <laughs> so bad. So um, bad. when and i got i got another broad's name on my arm and that was just that wasn't even like a that wasn't even like a relationship when that's just some broad's name on my arm ladies and gentlemen when you're listening to the show i hope you're doing it in your bathrobe at the palazzo <laughs> thank you so much for listening tonight we'll see you again uh, next week Huel will be uh mia next week but he'll be back yeah. the week after i believe but uh i am going to be traveling across the country with lazarus lake running running down old highway 20 i think in the badlands of nebraska who's lazarus lake oh that's right that's right that's right. we did this last week oh no we did yeah. this in the lost episodes where we talked about that Oh, the Barkley Marathon. Yeah. The last episode. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So save that for the next time you come on. And right. uh, enjoy enjoy Extreme Rules on Sunday. Okay, buddy? Okay, buddy. All right. We'll see everybody later. Thank you so much and good night. I love you all. You guys should all buy uh, marijuana spray to spray on your vaginas or your uh, friends' vaginas. Does it work on your peen? No. I don't, think, uh, I don't think they're made out of the same leather it's out of the same skin like, could you spray it in your mouth for a quicker hit it's just coconut oil so i wouldn't see why it wouldn't be edible but oh, i'm not sure that that would be the most efficient way coconut i think oil is like all the all-inclusive lubricant it's like good yeah. for everything cooking and sex